Yo ho there, folks! How's it going? Here's another episode of the top 10 best performances of the greatest actors of all time. Yep, that's right. I'm starting from 10 and then working my way up to number 1, and yes indeed, all of these lists come from pure, passionate accuracy. It is with a heavy heart today to talk about one of the greatest actors that has ever graced the big and little screen. Ed Asner. Formerly known as Edward Asner, but after seeing so many of his projects and hearing so many of his lovely interviews, I think we all just prefer to call him Ed, right? He was born from a Jewish family in good old Kansas City, Missouri. He was bred to be the best hard-working man and took so many odd jobs and even served in the army before even making a breakthrough in the performing arts. But soon after his service, that would all change since he always had the drama bug in him. He went back to Chicago where he went to college and found the Playwrights Theatre Company. And not long after that, he made his debut on Broadway with Jack Lemmon. The journey continued of bit roles on television and film, and it wasn't until 1970 where he graced the whole world with the Mary Tyler Moore Show, playing his most famous and notable character, Lou Grant. This is obviously what Ed Asner is best known for, and of course his character was monumental with being among the more popular and famous supporting characters on a show, successful show, and then having his own successful, keyword, successful, spin-off show of the same character, simply titled Lou Grant. Of his 12 years of playing Lou Grant, he was nominated for 12 Emmys, winning five of them. You just gotta love that mug when he just looks at you and goes, you know, you got spunk. I know, I hate spunk! <laughs> he has had an amazing career in television for sure, but not a lot of people remember his film contributions, which is where I come in. Once again, I'm not going to honor TV shows or miniseries on these lists, as amazing and honorable as they are, just because, do you guys realize how much TV that is? It's not that it just goes unnoticed, I just focus on film, that's it, period. Which the beloved Edward Asner certainly did. Alright, you little buggers, let's get going on the top 10 best film performances of the late and great Ed Asner. Number 10, The Christmas Card. Spoiler alert straight away, Ed Asner did a lot of Hallmark Christmas movies. So get ready for the Christmas theme to pop up uh, quite a bit here. This film specifically is not the best, but it is the best performance Ed Asner has given in all of the Christmas movies he did. Maybe that's why he received an Emmy nomination for her Best Supporting Actor for this one. He plays a father who gets saved from a car accident by an army sergeant who just happened to stop into the same small town to pay respects for the death of his comrade in Afghanistan. To pay thanks for saving Asner's life, he invites the soldier for Christmas since he has no one. But he then meets Asner's daughter, who is actually the woman who sent a Christmas card to soldiers, which he received overseas. The hallmark gushiness is ever so present here, but Ed Asner's performance gives it such a grounding relevance, which I indeed adore. You got Ed Asner and my favorite holiday. What could go wrong? And what can I say? I really am a sucker for things like that. Number nine, Out of the Woods. Another hallmark film. This time Ed Asner is a grandpa. Shocking, right? who is visited by his slightly estranged big-shot lawyer grandson, played by Jason London, to really stop him from signing away his fortune to an Indian tribe. With every possible obstacle stopping the grandson from leaving, Asner starts to teach his grandson the importance of his decisions, and why he is choosing to give everything to the tribe. This film honestly did surprise me quite a bit, because it's a cliché type of Hallmark story, you know? But Ed Asner adds such a lovely piece of humanity to this role, that it made me connect with him personally. It is definitely one of those lovely performances to cuddle up with on a Sunday afternoon, or if you're at home sick. Not with, uh, you know. Number 8, JFK. This is one of the best small cameos, which is a big propeller for the plot of the film. 
If you haven't seen the movie JFK, it chronicles the conspiracy all surrounding the assassination of President John F. Kennedy, with the central character being Kevin Costner playing lawyer Jim Garrison, fueling the investigation. Ed Asner plays an investigator, Guy Bannister, who has his own prejudices of JFK, and then one night goes into a drunken rage against his partner Jack Lemmon, spewing, DON'T YOU SHOW THE FILES, and then pistol whip him. You're thinking, what the heck? That's Oliver Stone, man, showing images that make you go, whoa. But Ed Asner relishes in this kind of hateful character that he became one of the more memorable performances in an all-star cast. The movie itself is absolutely engaging and outstanding. Number seven, Love Meet Hope. Yes, indeed, another Hallmark-like film starring Asner as a grandpa who mourns the death of his wife, and at the same time, his grandson is suffering from a divorce. So Asner gives him a book of love elements that he wrote for his wife, which tells all these imaginative tales of fighting for love. It's so cute, and seeing Asner have so much fun in this role is really an uplifter. I'm not sure if I said this, but I've never been a huge fan of Hallmark films. I'm not sure if that came across quite clear. But I admit, there are some dear ones that I've seen that, once again, what can I say? I am a sucker for it. The way Asner tells all these stories are just so adorable. Number six, Happily Ever After. Okay, now we're getting into some childhood nostalgia up in here. This is technically the unofficial sequel to Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, not produced by Disney, but it takes place literally right after the handsome prince rescues Snow White. But it's amazing how in between films, Snow White had such a wardrobe and maturity change. Same as the prince. Yep, orange hair, ten times better, man. But as they go on their way to the prince's castle, already they're fighting like a high school couple. It's hilarious. Meanwhile, the evil queen is dead, right? So all of her goons back at the castle are celebrating with the lead owl named Scowl, basically bathing in the relaxation. If you think Ed Asner does the voice of Scowl, good job, you guessed right, high five. However, the celebration is interrupted by the evil queen's brother, played by Malcolm McDowell from A Clockwork Orange. Brilliant, right? And he consults the magic mirror, played by Dom DeLuise, finds out his sister was killed, and Snow White and the prince are involved. Forget the fact that she had nothing to do with her death, but hey, do a favor for your dead sister, huh? Go after them. So the prince is captured by the brother, and Snow White escapes and stumbles upon the female cousins of the seven dwarves called the Seven Dwarvels. I'm not kidding. And they try to figure out a way to rescue the prince before it's too late. God, this movie. If you have not seen it, please see it at least once, because I know you'll have such a good laugh. I actually had this movie on VHS as a kid, which is why it's so nostalgic for me. But sincerely, the great thing going for it is truly Ed Asner's voice work as the new appointed evil sidekick of the evil queen's brother, Scowl. He's so hilarious. And side note, I think it's amazing how I went from talking about Ed Asner to somewhat reviewing Happily Ever After. Which is fine, because I don't think I'll ever review this film separately, but who knows? Anyway, if you have kids, or if you just want a good laugh, please, you want to see Ed Asner's performance here. Number five, Anatomy of an Illness. This is technically a biopic of real-life editor and political journalist Norman Cousins, who was unexpectedly diagnosed with a collagen disease, which his specific type was incurable. Not certified as a doctor at all, Cousins put it upon himself to ingest massive doses of vitamin C and watch a big amount of comedy films and comedians because as they say, laughter is the best medicine. This of course is scaring the doctors because not only is Cousins feeling better, but other patients have taken his treatment to heart and applied it themselves even though they don't have the same diagnosis. There have been actual patients that have expressed the positive change this treatment has given them because, like I said, this was a biopic based on a true story. The story is really touching, chronicling in Cousin's autobiography with the same title, and Ed Asner is indeed very touching and engaging. Norman Cousins was quite against Ed Asner playing him since 
they look nothing alike. But after it premiered, Norman Cousins was very, very pleased. Number four, A Case of Libel. Based on a book and then a play, which actually came from a factual case back in 1954, Reynolds v. Pegler, where a reporter takes a Pulitzer Prize winning columnist to court for libel, saying the reporter was a communist in print. This is a very entertaining and yet deeply troubling film adaptation of the play, which I actually saw performed in my high school, funny enough. I say deeply troubling only because this story practically mirrors the real-life press troubles of Ed Asner. If you don't know his history, Ed Asner has been accused of being a communist for years, just because of his liberal views and actions taken to serve others in his own way. He's been accused of taking money from SAG and funding the mercenaries in El Salvador during the whole war in the 1980s, which were all false, and you should see how some networks who shall remain nameless, have spewed more negativity about him in the recent years because of his activism. So with all that being said, most of the troubling time was during this film, which came out in 1983, filmed right smack dab in all that hogwash, and Ed Asner just shines so much in this role as the prosecuting lawyer. He had such confidence, he had a confident presence about him, which is clear why he captured the eyes and hearts of millions because like Edward G. Robinson, for example, Asner spoke truth. He spoke his own truth, which is why I love him so much in this film. If you ever get the chance to see it, I do recommend it. Number three, A Small Killing. Another TV film based on the novel, The Ragbag Clan, starring Asner as an undercover cop disguised as a homeless alcoholic who was forced to team up with a college professor played by Gene Simmons. No, not that Gene Simmons. Remember the lovely Gene Simmons? Yeah. They pair up to take down a drug lord and they start to fall for each other in the process. This one again very much surprised me. Not that I doubted Asner or Simmons' work, obviously, but the script was so good and really fun. And once again, I believe it's because Asner brings a lot of his lovable self in the role and into a romantic leading man which is not the common thing for actors like him. You'd never expect Asner and Simmons to be romantic leads together, but they work so well together. And if you come across it, take some time, have some fun, and go ahead and watch it. Number two, A Friendship in Vienna. A very touching Disney Channel TV movie based on the popular children's book, The Devil in Vienna, telling the story of two young best friends Inga and Lisa, who are enjoying their lives and friendship in 1938 Austria, just months away from the occupation of the Nazi party. What makes matters initially painful is that Lisa is Catholic, but Inga is Jewish. Lisa's father is basically a partner and a future volunteered soldier for the Nazi party. So Lisa and Inga learn to push forward through the frightening times of World War II, being on opposite sides practically. Asner plays Inga's grandfather, who teaches her a lot of the faithful lessons of life. This story was very personal for Asner, obviously as he was a Jewish American, and in this film, he gives the heart and soul of what this character needs and deserves. There's indeed an uneasy scene where Nazis show up on the family's doorstep, ordering Inga's grandpa to go with them. One of the first things he says to Inga is, Come on, sweetheart. Help me pick a tie. It's very touching. If you're a teacher on here, I would recommend this Disney produced film for educational purposes as it will teach young kids not just history, but the power of building friendships no matter what anyone, anyone would say. And that's the beauty about Ed Asner's performance here. With that quiet confidence, he just stands proud no matter the obstacles, the opposition, the controversy. He is going to stand up for what he believes in and what is going to be the best for the great of all good, love. Now, here are just a couple of honorable mentions. Gus, another live action Disney movie with Asner playing the manager of the California Adams, a football team down in the dumps, and the one thing that will save them is a field goal kicking mule named Gus. This movie is downright silly, but Asner is fantastic as the manager on the brink of madness. 
The Man Who Saved Christmas, a lovely take on the true story of A.C. Gilbert, a toy maker who was forced to turn his toy factory into a weapon factory to help the efforts of our American soldiers in World War II. Jason Alexander is so wonderful as Gilbert, but Ed Asner, always the gruff and gut-punching father who believes in doing the right thing. Add this one to your list of Hallmark Christmas classics. It's one of the better ones out there, and that is certainly saying something. Elf! Everyone knows this one, right? Buddy the Elf, what's your favorite color? Who does the gruff and utterly bitter Ed Asner play in this one? Why, Santa Claus, of course! I remember seeing his name pop up when I was a kid and thinking, Oh, how perfect! And he is. He's one of the best Santas ever put on screen. Ford Apache The Bronx, based on the nonfiction book by Tom Walker, chronicling the everyday activity of apparently the most dangerous precinct in New York, with Ed Asner playing the new captain who was brought in from the outside to command it. Asner is like Cool Hand Luke in this film, giving Paul Newman orders, and that was definitely a memorable piece of work for him. The Gathering, another classic made-for-TV Christmas film with Maureen Stapleton and Ed Asner as an estranged married couple, but are inspired to come together with their adult children for one last Christmas, as Ed Asner is approaching death with cancer. Ed Asner and Christmas, once again, it's the combo that keeps on tugging on your heartstrings. And this was a huge hit, winning the Emmy for Best Made for TV Film. Another great film to cozy up with your loved ones. Number one, Up. This is not up for debate, people. Up is the defining performance of Ed Asner's film career. I remember the very first time I saw this film in theaters with my best friend in high school. Of course, the first 10 minutes you get two 19-year-old guys blubbering like babies. And then the comedy really takes off with Ed Asner as the lovable, older, curmudgeon version of Carl. Ed Asner just added magic to Carl. The producers at Pixar said themselves that they built the character of Carl basically around how much Ed Asner added to the role. The pairing of Carl and Russell is just comic gold, and then in the more touching moments of he and Ellie, it just melts your heart completely. Everywhere Ed Asner went after Up, more and more people recognized him of his beautiful addition to a character we all know and relate to so much, because Carl reminds us of a whole lot of grandfathers and senior citizens who has such an underlying hint of loss, but they have a goal and they do have vision. And that's one of the more troubling and yet beautiful things that we can experience with all these great films, seeing characters that are <laughs> curmudgeon-like, extremely rude and mean, but you forgive them for it because you can respect your elders, but at the same time we can see there were so many lost dreams behind them, and we just root for them and want them to succeed. All in all, no matter the hardships of his characters and his life, Ed Asner still powered through with his booming, gruff voice and his pure love for life. People have said he was such a curmudgeon in real life, like Paul Rudd, who actually worked on Broadway with him, said when he asked Ed Asner how he was doing one day, Ed replied, F you. <laughs> All in good fun, of course. I am thankful there was a man like that who was just brutally honest, you know? He let you know his thoughts and you did not care if it offended you. I guess it's one of those cases where you gotta know him to love him. I feel I have gotten to know him with his contribution to film and to the world with his generosity and I am ever so grateful for that. We did sadly lose Ed Asner on August 29th, 2021, but his legacy, indeed, lives on. So that's it, ladies and gents. You tell me right here and now. Did I miss anything? What are some of your favorite performances from this incredible man? Please, 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 list in the comments below. I love to hear your thoughts. Honestly, I truly do. I'm not just saying that. If you like this, please click like, subscribe, and ring the bell right there to stay updated on all new videos, which will be coming very soon. But in the meantime, thank you all so kindly for watching, and stay positive and stay healthy. Much love.